Allen Line was founded in 1854 by Hugh Allen and was originally called the Montreal Ocean Steamship Company. In the mid-1800s, speedy mail delivery was becoming very popular and steamships were the fastest carriers. It was in these conditions that the scene was set for the fateful voyage of the Hungarian. On February the 8th, 1860, the Hungarian prepared to sail. People gathered on the Liverpool docks and waved their farewells to friends and family. Ocean travel was becoming safer with better maps and navigation tools, but little did they know what fate had in store. Dawn was breaking as she slipped routinely out of the harbor and into the gray North Atlantic. For the most part, the voyage was uneventful. Many passengers may have had the usual seasickness to deal with, but the weather was cooperative. Rapid crossings were the goal of the Allen Line, some as short as 10 days. Since these ships carried the Royal Mail, it was important that crossings be as short as possible. This trip promised to be one of the quickest. As the coast of Nova Scotia grew near, a powerful nor'easter thundered up the coast. The Hungarian was directly in its path. She encountered near hurricane winds with enormous waves. Captain Jones and his navigator tried to keep the ship well offshore to avoid being driven into shallow waters. They would have known that they were in the vicinity of Cape Sable, but for reasons that will never be known, Hungarians sailed through the treacherous horse race and onto the Cape Ledges. The jagged rocks of the ledge ripped the iron hull, and with the unending surf and wind battering her, the Hungarians settled into the relatively shallow water. Her upper deck, spars and funnel were above water, which allowed some passengers to cling on in hope of being rescued. Conditions prevented the crew from launching life rafts, so passengers continued to climb to the highest spots. Many clung to the rigging in a final attempt to save themselves. Many were numbed by the cold and unable to hold on any longer, dropped into the cold waters. From shore, the townspeople watched helplessly as the Hungarian's lights slowly flickered out. They knew there was nothing they could do to help. They could do nothing but pray for possible survivors. Their prayers were not to be answered. One by one, those clinging to whatever they could grasp slipped into the cold Atlantic. As the evening of February the 19th, 1860 drew to a close, so did the fate of the Hungarian and all on board. Not a single person of the 237 on board survived, and very few were ever recovered. 